Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In my previous video, I have discussed the transmitter and receivers of coherent binary phase shift keying technique. In this video, I will be deriving an expression for the average probability of error for coherent binary phase shift keying technique. To start with, in a coherent binary PSK system, during the transmission of symbol 1, we transmit the carrier as it is. Whereas, while transmitting symbol 0, we phase advance the carrier by 180 degree. Let the pair of signals S1 of t and S2 of t represent binary symbols 1 and 0 respectively. So, S1 of t is given by square root of 2 eb by tb cos 2 pi fc t, whereas S2 of t is square root of 2 eb by tb cos 2 pi fc t plus pi. Now, we know that cos is negative in the third quadrant. Therefore, cos 2 pi fct plus pi will be minus of cos 2 pi fct. So, S2 of t is therefore given by minus of square root of 2 eb by tb cos 2 pi fct. Here, eb is the transmitted bit energy, whereas tb is the bit duration. To calculate the probability of error incurred in the system, we use a signal space approach. By analyzing equations 1 and 2 carefully, we recognize that the coherent binary phase shift keying system has only one basis function which will be the common part of both S1 of t and S2 of t. By analyzing these two equations, we will find that square root of 2 by tb cos 2 pi of t is common in both equations 1 and 2 and therefore, it will be the basis function. So, the orthonormal basis function for binary PSK is given by phi 1 of t equals square root of 2 by tb cos 2 pi of t over the interval 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to tb. Now, we can express the transmitted signals s1 of t and s2 of t in terms of the basis function phi 1 of t as s1 of t is equals to s11 into phi 1 of t whereas s2 of t is given by s21 into phi 2 of t. By analyzing equations 4 and 5, we will now find that the coherent binary PSK system is characterized by having a signal space that is one dimensional with two message points S1 of t and S2 of t that are located at S11 and S21 respectively. Let us now find S11 and S21 by using the equations that we have previously discussed in the gram schmidt orthogonalization procedure. We know that the coefficient of expansion Sij is equals to integral 0 to tb s i of t into phi j of t. So, s 11 is equals to integral 0 to t b s 1 of t into phi 1 of t dt. Let us take s 1 of t from equation 1 and phi 1 of t from equation 3 and substitute it here. We have done it here. Now, let me take square root of e b common and let the other term b as it is common be written as the squared value. Now, I will take square root of e b towards the constant size. So, what remains is integral 0 to t b. This is nothing but phi 1 of t. So, it is phi 1 of t square dt. Now, since phi 1 of t is an orthonormal basis function and orthonormal basis functions are characterized by having unit energy, integral 0 to t b phi 1 square of t dt will be equal to 1. So, the coordinate of the first message point s 1 of t which is s 1 1 is equals to plus root e b. Let us now perform the same operation for finding S21. Now, S21 is equals to integral 0 to tb S2 of t into phi 1 of t dt. I am taking S2 of t from equation 2 and phi 1 of t from equation 3. Once again, I am taking square root of eb as common and then the remaining term will be written as square root of 2 by tb cos 2 pi of t whole square. Now, I will take square root of eb towards the constant term. So, it will be minus root eb into integral 0 to tb square root of 2 by tb cos 2 pi fct whole square. Now, since square root of 2 by tb cos 2 pi fct is nothing but phi 1, we will write it as minus square root of eb integral 0 to tb phi 1 square of t dt. And since integral 0 to tb phi 1 square of t dt is 1, s21 is equals to minus root eb. With that, now we move on to the constellation diagram or the signal space for binary PSK. As already said, the binary PSK system is characterized by having a one dimensional constellation diagram which is given here by the phi 1 axis. The message points corresponding to S1 of t or symbol 1 is located at S11 which is equals to plus root eb 
and the message point corresponding to symbol 0 or signal S2 of t is located at S21 which is equals to minus square root of EB. Let us assume that the binary symbols 0 and 1 at the input occur with equal probability. Therefore, the threshold used by the decision device will be halfway point between the two message points which will be exactly at 0 point here. Let us now move on to the decision rule. To realize the decision rule as to whether symbol 1 or symbol 0 was sent, we must partition the one dimensional constellation diagram into two regions. The first region is the set of all points that are closest to the first message point at plus root EB. The second region is the set of all points closest to the second message point at minus root EB. The corresponding decision regions as shown in the diagram here will be named decision region Z1 and Z2 respectively. Therefore, the decision rule is now simply to decide in favor of symbol 1 or signal S1 of T if the received signal point falls in region Z1 and decide in favor of symbol 0 or signal S2 of T if the received signal point falls in region Z2. However, in doing so, we will note that two kinds of erroneous decisions are likely to be made by the receiver. The first one, which is also called as the first kind of error, is when symbol 0 is sent, but the channel noise W of T is such that the received signal point falls inside region Z1 and therefore the receiver will decide in favor of symbol 1. This is called as first kind of error. On the other hand, the second kind of error is when symbol 1 is transmitted, but the channel noise W of T is such that the received signal point falls inside region Z2 and therefore the receiver decides in favor of symbol 0. We refer to these conditional errors as errors of first and second kind respectively. Let us now move on towards the receiver. Let the received signal be denoted by X of T and let the received signal be applied to a matched filter receiver. Now the received signal point which is also called as the observation point is calculated by sampling the matched filter output at a time T is equals to TB. Therefore I can write X1 very similar to how I have written S11 and S21 as integral 0 to TB x of t into phi 1 of t dt. It should be noted that the received signal point x1 can fall anywhere along the phi 1 axis in the constellation diagram shown. This in fact is true because x1 which is the coefficient at the output of the matched filter is a sample value of a Gaussian distributed random variable which is denoted by capital X1. So, when symbol 0 is sent, the mean value of the random variable x1 is minus root EB. On the other hand, when symbol 1 is sent, the mean value of the random variable capital X1 is plus root EB. However, regardless of whether symbol 0 or symbol 1 was sent, the variance of the random variable x1 is always equal to N0 by 2, where N0 by 2 is the power spectral density of the AWG channel noise. With that, now we are ready to calculate the probability of error of first kind and second kind respectively. I will start with the probability of error of first kind which is denoted by PE of 0. To calculate PE of 0, assume symbol 0 is sent. Under this condition, an error will be made if the receiver decides in favor of symbol 1. Now, from the constellation diagram that I had shown previously, we note that the decision region associated with symbol 1 is defined by 0 to infinity. So, when the transmitted symbol is 0, if the value of x1 lies anywhere between 0 to infinity, that will be an error. So, I will write the decision boundaries for region Z1 first, as shown in the equation 9 here, where x1 once again is the observation scalar. We will now continue to find the probability density function which is also the likelihood function of x1 falling under region z1. Now since as we already have said the random variable x1 when symbol 0 is sent has a mean value of minus root eb and a variance of n0 by 2. Now I will write the equation for the conditional probability density function under the assumption that symbol 0 was sent as fx1 of x1 given 0. Now this is the likelihood function and this is as we already have said is defined in terms of Gaussian distribution. I have written here the equation for Gaussian distribution which is given by 1 divided by square root of 2 pi into variance of x1 
multiplied by exponential of minus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by variance of x1 multiplied by x1 minus mean of x1 whole square. Previously, I have said the mean of x1 when symbol 0 was sent is minus root e b and the variance of x1 when symbol 0 was sent is n naught by 2. I will substitute those values here. So, variance of x1 is written as n naught by 2 both here as well as here and the mean value of x1 is substituted as minus root e b. Now, I will simplify this by cancelling 2 here as well as here, further here as well as here and this minus of minus root e b will become plus root e b. So, the likelihood function under the assumption that symbol 0 was sent is now given by 1 by square root of pi n naught into exponential of minus 1 by n naught into x1 plus root e b whole square. Now, as we said, p e of 0 represents the probability of error of the first kind. We can calculate p e of 0 by integrating the area under the conditional probability density, which is also equal to the likelihood curve. So, if I integrate this under the limits of region z1, which is 0 to infinity, we will obtain probability of error of first kind, which is written in the equation part here. So, p e of 0 is equals to integral the limits are 0 to infinity f x 1 of x 1 given 0 d x 1. I can now substitute equation 10 which in fact is for the likelihood function into equation 11 to obtain this equation. Now, I am going to perform a variable change. I am going to write the square root of the contents of exponential term except for the negative symbol as a new variable z. So, z as you can see is 1 by square root of n naught into x 1 plus root e b. Now that I have changed the variable from x1 to z, I need to change the limits of integral as well as I need to find the value of dx1 as well, which I have done here. All I need to do is to simply substitute what were the old values of the integral limits to find out the new values of integral limits. Previously, when x1 was infinity, by substituting x1 equals to infinity, we will obtain z also equal to infinity. Similarly, when x1 equals to 0, we find z equals to square root of e b by n naught. Finally, to find the value of dx1, I will differentiate equation 13 with respect to x1. So, dz by dx1 is equals to d by dx1 of this complete term. Now, we know that root of e b is a constant, so it can be eliminated from differentiation. So, what remains here will only be d by dx1 of x1 divided by square root of n naught d by dx1 of x1 is equals to 1. So, what remains at the RHS is only 1 divided by square root of n0. So, by rearranging this equation, I will find the value of dx1 is equals to square root of n0 into dz. Now, after finding the new integral limits as well as the value of dx1, let me substitute all of them into equation 12 here, which in fact is given here. So, it is 1 by square root of n naught into the lower limit is square root of e b by n naught and the upper limit is infinity, it is written as it is. Then as we have previously said, the square root of contents of the exponential term except for the negative symbol is taken as z. So, therefore, this complete term will become minus z square that is written here followed by dx1. So, dx1 as per the new calculation is square root of n naught into dz which is also written here. We have here a square root of n0 in the denominator and we have 1 in the numerator as well. Let us cancel them out. So, what remains for the equation for the probability of error of the first kind which is p of 0 is 1 by square root of pi integral lower limit square root of e b by n0 upper limit infinity exponential of minus z square dz. We do not have to simplify this equation because we are now going to compare it with the complementary error function which is given by ERFC of u equals to 2 divided by square root of pi integral u to infinity exponential of minus z square dz. Now, by carefully comparing equation 14 and 15, we can now write the probability of error for symbol 0 which is p e of 0 in terms of the complementary error function as p e of 0 equals 1 by 2 into ERFC of square root of e b by n naught. This is the final expression for the probability of error of first kind. Let us now move on to find the probability of error for the second kind which is p e of 1. To calculate the probability of making an error of the second kind, we will assume symbol 1 is transmitted. Under this condition, a error is made if the receiver decides in favor of symbol 0. 
So very similarly, now I have to go back to the constellation diagram or the signal space and find out what are the boundaries of the region Z2. You can see it starts from minus infinity and closes at 0. So when symbol 1 is transmitted and the received signal point x1 falls anywhere between minus infinity and 0, then that will be an error of the second kind. So I will start by writing the boundaries for region Z2 which is minus infinity to 0. In this particular case, you should note the random variable x1 with a sample value of small x1 will have a mean of plus root eb and a variance of n0 by 2. So I am going to once again write a conditional probability density function for this and I am going to follow the same exact steps as what I have done for finding the probability of error of first kind which is p of 0 to note that the probability of error of the second kind is also equal to 1 by 2 into ERFC of square root of EB by n naught. Now, having found both PE of 0 as well as PE of 1, let us now continue to find the average probability of error. To determine the average probability of error at the receiver, we note that the two possible kinds of error considered are mutually exclusive events. That is, if the receiver chooses symbol 1, then symbol 0 is excluded from appearing and vice versa. Also, we note that the probability of error of symbol 0 and probability of error of symbol 1 are conditional probabilities. That is very important to note. So, assuming that the a priori probability of transmitting symbol 0 is represented by P0 and the a priori probability of transmitting symbol 1 is represented by P1, the average probability of error for the binary PSK is given by PE, which is the average probability of error denotion equals to P0 multiplied by PE of 0 plus P1 into PE of 1. As I already said, the prior probabilities of symbol 0 and 1 are equal. Therefore, P0, which is the prior probability of symbol 0, is equal to P1, which is prior probability of symbol 1, is equal to 1 by 2. Further, as we already have noted, probability of error for symbol 0 is equal to probability of error for symbol 1. Now, I will substitute these two equations back into my average probability of error equation to find 1 by 2 into P of 0 plus 1 by 2 into P of 0 again. Now, I have intentionally written it as P of 0 because it is equal to P of 1. Therefore, by analyzing this equation carefully, we can finally write the average probability of error as equal to P e of 0 as well as P e of 1. Therefore, the final expression for the average probability of error for coherent binary phase shift keying technique is equal to 1 by 2 ERFC of square root of EB by N0. Well, that is about the derivation for the average probability of error for coherent BPSK system. If you like this video, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.